All right, let's look at strength of acids. Not all acids are the same strength. Okay, so the strength of the acid is determined by the equilibrium position of its dissociation reaction. And so let's take a look at the standard uh, acid base that we had been looking at before. In a strong acid, the equilibrium will lie very far to the right or towards products. And that's because almost all of the original acid has dissociated. Because it's a strong acid, that means it will completely dissociate. A strong acid will also yield a weak conjugate base. A weak base means it has a low affinity for protons, and this would make it weaker than water. So if this is our acid, this would be our conjugate base, and this is weaker than water. Some strong acids that you should you need to know are H2SO4, so sulfuric acid, HCl, hydrochloric acid, HNO3, which is nitric acid, and HClO4, which is perchloric acid. So these are the four that you're going to really want to make sure you know. Okay, let's look at weak acids. Weak acids are basically the opposite. The equilibrium will lie very far to the left. And the reason for this is because most of the acid that was originally put in the solution is still present as HA or as its acid at equilibrium. So as when a strong acid yielded a weak conjugate base, a weak acid yields a strong conjugate base, and it's stronger than water. So this means that water can't pull the H plus ions from the conjugate base. And so that's why um, most of the acid will stay as HA. Okay, some other types of acids. We've got a diprotic acid that has two acidic protons. So, for example, here's our strong acid, H2SO4, and one of those acids is dissociating. So it's H plus and HSO4 minus. HSO4 minus is actually a weak acid, and so its H will come off, so we've got the H plus and SO4 2 minus. An oxy acid is, an acid, is where the acidic proton is attached to an oxygen atom. So some examples would be HNO3 or H3PO4. Okay, an organic acid is one that has a carbon backbone and usually what's called a carboxyl group. Um, this is your carboxyl group up here. Okay, so we've got a C double bonded O and then an OH. So here's our hydrogen. Okay, here's an example. We've got CH3COH. Notice we've got three other hydrogens. These are not acidic, so this is the only acidic hydrogen. And these are usually weak acids. Okay, hydrohalic acids are where the acidic proton is attached to a halogen atom. So, for example, HCl, since chlorine is a halogen. And then we have monoprotic acids, which have one acidic proton. So HCl would also qualify as monoprotic. For monoprotic acids, the K sub A values aren't given if it's a strong acid. Because it completely dissociates, the concentration of HXX being the halogen is so small that um, you can't your Ka value is going to be tiny. Other Ka values, however, are given in Table 14.2 on page 628 of your book. Okay, here's a chart that kind of views uh, acid strength. So we've got the Ka value is large for a strong acid, small for a weak acid. The position of dissociation at equilibrium far to the right for strong, far to the left for a weak acid. Uh, equilibrium concentration of H plus compared to the original of HA for a strong acid because it completely dissociates they are about equal for a weak acid because it doesn't dissociate the H plus is much smaller than the original concentration of the acid and if we look at the strength of the conjugate base compared to water for a strong acid the conjugate base is much weaker than water but for a weak acid the conjugate base is much stronger than that of water so let's look at an example. So it says, using K sub A values, arrange the following species according to their strengths. There's a typo there. As bases. Okay, well, we know that strong acids have weak conjugate bases. Okay, so I know that HCl is a strong acid. So this means that Cl minus is a weak conjugate base. And so I know that's going to be weaker than water. Okay, and so now I just need to look at the fluorine ion, NO2 minus ion, and the CN minus ion. 
So if I look at on the table that I referenced in the book, the case of A values for some of these S's. Okay, so the Ka for hydrofluoric acid is 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, the case of A for HNO2 is 4 times 10 to the negative 4. And for HCN, six point two times ten to the negative ten. Okay, so the strength, because the strength of the acid is inversely related, um, then that flips these. So if this one is, let's see, largest. So this I would rank as being the biggest, middle, very small, that flips them. And so we've got fluorine ion, NO2 minus ion, and the CN minus ion. So CN minus, because it has the smallest case of A value, is the strongest conjugate base. Okay, well, water can be amphoteric, which means it can behave as an acid or a base, and it's the most common amphoteric substance. So, autoionization is the transfer of a proton from one molecule to another of the same substance, and so this happens a lot with water, which is why it's amphoteric. So, for example, we've got one water acting as an acid, one water acting as a base, and so this is accepting the proton, making it H3O+. Plus. And then our acid is donating the proton, making it OH minus. This can occur in other liquids besides water as well. Um, we've got the ammonia ion producing ammonia producing the ammonium ion, and then NH2 minus. So one ammonia accepted a proton, donated. You can also look at what's called case of W, which is the ion product constant or the dissociation constant, and it's the concentration of H3O plus times the OH minus. And remember we can write H3O plus as H plus and so it's the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus. And based on experimental evidence we found that at 25 degrees Celsius H plus equals OH minus and those concentrations are equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 7. So if that's true that means that case of W is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. This is going to become important, so make sure you remember that. Okay, so in an aqueous solution at 25 degrees Celsius, no matter what it contains, the product of H plus and OH is always going to equal that 1 times 10 to the 14, negative 14. Okay, so there are three situations we can look at for case of W. We can have a neutral solution where the concentrations are equal, so they would each equal 1 times 10 to the negative 7. We can have an acidic solution where the concentration of H plus is greater than OH, but yet the product for case of W is still 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Or we can have a basic solution where the concentration of OH is greater than H plus, but yet, as we said before, the product is still equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. However, since case of W is an equilibrium constant, it does vary with temperature, and as temperature increases, case of W will increase. All right, so let's look at another example. We want to calculate H plus and OH minus for each of the following solutions at 25C and state whether the solution is neutral, acidic, or basic. So let's look at the first one. So we have 1 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity for OH. Well, since we know that case of W is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14, if we divide that by our concentration, of OH, that gives us the concentration of H plus. And since when we divide exponents, we subtract them, that means that H plus is 1 times 10 to the negative 9. And so, because the OH concentration is larger than the H plus concentration, that means that this is a basic solution. Look at another one. What if we had 1 times 10 to the negative 7? Well, 
if we did the same process as up here, take our 1 times 10 to the negative 14k sub w divided by our OH, that gives us 1 times 10 to the negative 7 for the concentration of H plus. And since now the concentration of OH minus is equal to the concentration of H plus, this is a neutral solution. Let's get one more. And let's say we have a 10 molar concentration of H plus. Okay, so now we take our case of W, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. We divide that by our H plus concentration, and we get 1 times 10. Let's see, that'd be 1 over 1, negative 15. Clarity, and that's equal to our OH minus concentration. Well, now since the H plus is greater than the OH minus concentration, this is an acidic solution. And let's look at another example. Okay, at 60 degrees Celsius, the value of K sub W is 1 times 10 to the negative 13. So it's using Le Chatelet's principle, predict whether the reaction of two water goes to H3O plus and OH minus is exothermic or endothermic. So because K sub W increased from 1 times 10 to the negative 14 to 1 times 10 to the negative 13, that means that the T increased. And so we can look at this as a reactant. And according to Le Chatelier's principle, because we are trying to equalize things that are changed, if energy is added as a reactant, that means that this is an endothermic process. Let's look at the second part. If we want to calculate H plus and OH minus in a neutral solution at 60, Neutral means that the concentration of H plus and OH minus are equal. And so we can take the square root of our case of W. Okay, and that gives us 3 times 10 to the negative 7 molarity for our H plus and for the OH minus concentration because it's neutral. All right.